We give you the praise, the honor, and the glory, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for sending all of our members here today that we might receive this word in a way that is pleasing to you, Lord God. We thank you for all the things that you've given us. We ask that you anoint us with the Holy Spirit, Lord God, all of us, that we might, I might speak your word, Lord God, your thoughts, give your message, Lord God, and that the members will receive it in a way that is pleasing to you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Uh, just a blessing to see everyone out there today, as far as our fellowship is concerned. And it just dawned on me today, one of the beauties of the fellowship that we have here is that a lot of times I know it's hard to come, you know, because we have so many cares and, and worries in the Sometimes they always seem to get in the way. And we just don't really want to come. We don't feel like we, we can make it. We're just tired and sort of beaten up sometimes. But always when I come, you know, it's, I feel that joy of the spirit of Christ when I get here. It's, it's just a, a great feeling to uh, fellowship with the other members here. It always lightens my load in. It makes me feel better Amen. when I come, you know, and I see the other people here. And that's why it's important, I think, as a fellowship that we all remember just how important we are to our fellow members. You know, it's, it's, we really are important to each other. You know, more important than I sometimes think we were really uh, cognitive of or, or think about, you know. We may feel very, very uh, weak and, and lonely and, and maybe may not have a good feeling about where we are, but in our fellow members' eyes, you know, it, it's a great source of joy and encouragement in seeing each other. So it's a blessing. And one of the things that reminds me of when I used to read the Old Testament a lot of times, one of the things that stood out was just how the people in the, those days before Jesus Christ were waiting for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. They were waiting for God's Spirit to come to all mankind. And this was just such a, a treasure and an expectation that they had. And they put so much value and benefit in it. It was like the most amazing and the most powerful and the greatest thing that could ever happen. And they were just hoping that it would happen in their lifetime. And truly, if they could have had all the riches and treasures in the world, as opposed to this anointing, they would have taken the anointing. Uh, you can, as you read the Old Testament, you can see it was just something of so much value to them. And sometimes, I think we kind of take the Holy Spirit for granted and, and just don't realize just how blessed we are to have this anointing. I guess because we never really truly experienced times when it wasn't available, I don't know, but I know we do take it for granted. And when you go to the Acts of the Apostles uh, and you read first chapter one, verse five, it talks about how you know John the Baptist, Jesus said, John the Baptist truly baptized with water. But ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. So Jesus spoke about the power of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And it's interesting that the first question that Jesus received from the people was, when, was well, when they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, this is what the people wanted to know when he talked about the high power of the Holy Spirit. They said, Lord... Wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? So, with all of this power of the Holy Spirit, I think a lot of times we seem to look at it from the perspective of, well, what can it do for me? And how will it enhance my position in this world as we know it? You know, what can I gain from it? And Jesus said to them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. Once again, that's, you know, we really can't or shouldn't concern ourselves with what's going to happen as far as the world is concerned. That's not our concern. 
God has that under control. He'll determine when these things happen. And then Jesus went on to say, But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost will come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria, and unto, and, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. So, once again, we receive this power of the anointing of the Holy Spirit, and Jesus even said we're supposed to use that in order to help spread the word. But I think oftentimes <coughs> we get caught up in our own fears, and we do have a lot of fears. Uh, we have fears about, well, you know, how, where am I going to live? How am I going to eat? How am I going to clothe myself? These are common fears that we have every day. We worry about having a job and making the money that we need. We worry about a lot of things, bills, a whole bunch of things. I know I spend a lot of time myself worrying. You know, and in the essence of worry is, is fear. It's, it's just comes from fear. We're just afraid. And I think all of us were afraid that the church won't grow. We're afraid that, I don't know, we get afraid of pretty much everything. You know, and then we start worrying. And that's when the anxiety builds up. You know? And it's interesting because when you look at uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, uh, it says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So I think it's important that we all just understand that, you know, it's not about having fear about what we will have in the future or we don't have as far as material things. We've got to have the faith. The only way to overcome fear is faith. We've got to have the faith that God will continue to provide all those things that we need. When you look at everyone in this room, and I know everyone in this room has anxiety about something, fear about something, but everybody in this room essentially has everything they need to get through the day today. And that's a fact. So I think if we can continue, and, and it's not so much because of our own doing. I think everyone can look back on their own life right now and say with assurance, it wasn't so much what I did right that got me to this point that I'm at now, but it was the power of the Lord. <coughs> you know, it was the power of the Lord to deliver us from whatever trial and tribulation that we have found ourselves in. And it was the power of the Lord that put us in this place right now. And we have shelter, we have our health, we have our food, we have all that we need to get through the day. And it's there, it's real. And so once again, when we think about, you know, this word that we're given, and the really, the point that really stuck out for me this week was, is that when, you know, Jesus gave the parable about sowing the seed, and the different reactions as far as what happened when he sowed the seeds. And I think the, the last verse, Matthew chapter 13, verse 23, it kind of sums it all up when he said that, He that receiveth seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. So I think what's important is, is that when we hear this word, we have to understand what this word is. And by understanding it, we will bear good fruit. And the parable is explaining, you know, making the comparison to a, a garden and a garden having soil. And I think all of us know that in order to plant something, the soil has to be fertile soil. And when we plant it, in order for it to bear good fruit, we have to tend to it and we have to care for it. We have to cultivate that good soil so that this fruit can be bare. So once again, the focus cannot be on externally outside of ourselves. If we're worrying about where we're going to get money from, what's going to happen to our homes, what's going to happen to our families, if all we're doing is running around being fearful and carrying that anxiety that comes from not believing and not having faith, then we can't focus our energy and our time 
on cultivating that soil so that it can bear good fruit. If we don't have the faith we need to believe that yes, the Lord will not leave us out there hanging and will take this job to completion, then we won't have the ability to look inside of ourselves and continue to do the weeding process that's necessary in the taking care of that garden. As you all know, if you have a garden, weeds are going to pop up. You know, thristles and thorns are going to pop up. And if you don't go out into that garden and carefully take those thistles and thorns and weeds out, then the fruit is not going to be prosperous. It could be so happen that they could choke off whatever you planted in that garden. And a weeding process is a slow process. It's not a quick thing. You just can't go out there and bing, 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 bing and get done quick. It's a slow, arduous process. And you have to be consistent. You can't just do it in the spring and maybe in the middle of the summer and then forget about it. Because as soon as you turn around and you've neglected it, the weeds have overgrown and the garden's not bearing good fruit anymore. So we've got to get out there and look at all the things about ourselves, inside of ourselves, that we know are outside the will of the Lord, that we know are not helping us, you know, as far as fulfilling God's will. And we've got to weed them out. And we've got to consistently reevaluate and go back and do some more weeding. We've also got to water our garden. Water our garden with the will of the Lord, with the word of the Lord. You know, we just can't go out into the world and only do worldly things and expect that, you know, we're going to be, you know, sanctified and strengthen our Holy Spirit. We've got to fellowship with each other. We've got to push ourselves sometimes to go to those meetings and those events of the fellowship. Because when we do, we'll only strengthen that anointing of the Holy Spirit by fellowshipping with our fellow brothers and sisters. And we're working on ourselves. And when we go, we forget about our worries and our cares. And guess what? God fixes the problems all the time. When we need a job, the job comes. And it doesn't come from our efforts. God sends us a blessing because we're fellowshipping with someone and the person that we're fellowshipping with tells us about the job or the important aspect of the job that we were neglecting or he has the contact that we need to make. It comes from the fellowship and just working with each other. So now we're taking out the weeds, we're watering the, the, the ground and we're understanding this word now because we're looking inside of ourselves and we're pointing out those things inside of ourselves that need to be repaired, that are broken. And in the process of all of that and when we fellowship with each other, there's one thing that leaves us. The anxiety goes away and the fear goes away with it. And we're strong in the word and we have faith. And we're ready now to do God's work. And that's the spirit that we have to keep inside of our heart. It's the spirit that we have to have in order to lead us. So as this church, this body of Christians in this room, as we embark on this new journey that we're embarking on, let us continue to work together. Let us continue to look inside of ourselves and see how we can strengthen ourselves in the word. You know, let us not allow the concerns of the word to choke that spirit inside of us, that spirit of Christ. And let us be Christ-led, you know, not led by our own flesh. Let us be Christ-led and let us fellowship together and let us continue in this journey, this next chapter for the fellowship. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.